<clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome to my part of America, the part of America called New York, where a magical little man who was also a grave robber named Joe Smith, little Joe Smith, he found a couple gold nuggets in a rock or in a ground or whatever, and then he looked inside of his hat and he said, I'm a bird. Our country is run by a cult. Asadiga Eboi, eat the teal in Antarctica. Asadiga Eboi, Asadiga Eboi, Mr. Beast is gonna kill us all. Johnny Harris works for the state. Hasadiga Eboi, he thinks he is the new Joseph Smith. Hasadiga Eboi, he likes to cover for the CIA. Hasadiga Eboi, he says he's not Mormon, but I see through his bullshit. Hasadiga Eboi. Hasadiga Eboi, Hasadiga Eboi. The end of the world is tomorrow, Hasadiga Eboi. We're all gonna die and vaporize with a Tesla laser, Hasadiga Eboi. Hasadiga Eboi. Dude, I'm so fucking done with these Zionist wackadoodle mormos. All these BYU grads are really pissing me off, okay? Now, I wouldn't normally say that, but they keep trying to take my lives down, and I don't think that they want me to talk about this, the Mountain Meadows Massacre. So what do we do, guys? We got to talk about it. If they don't want us to talk about it, what do we do? Talk about it. So that's what we're going to do, babies. So here's the thing. Mountain Meadows Massacre. What is it, guys? Well, it's something that the Mormons did to themselves, essentially. It's what we call a flag of falsity. Fed flag. Okay. So <clears throat> anyway... The Mountain Meadow Massacre was a series of attacks during the Utah War that resulted in the mass murder of at, of at least 120 members of the Baker Fanker emigrant wagon train. The massacre occurred in the southern Utah Territory at Mountain Meadows and was perpetrated by settlers of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints LDS Church involved with the Utah Territorial Militia, Militia, officially named the Nauvoo Legion, who recruited and were aided by some southern Paiute Native Americans. The wagon trains... And let me, let me, let's put an asterisk there. Let's see if they actually had a choice. But the wagon trains made up mostly of families from Arkansas were bound for California, traveling on the old Spanish trail that passed through the territory. After arriving in Salt Lake City, the Baker Fancher party made their way south along the Mormon Road, eventually stopping to rest at Mountain Meadows. As the party was traveling west, there were rumors about the party's behavior towards Mormon settlers and war hysteria towards outsiders was rampant as a result of a military expedition dispatched by President Buchanan and Territor territorial governor Brigham Young's declaration of martial law in response. While the emigrants were camped at the meadow, local militia leaders, including Isaac H. Haight and John D. Lee, made plans to attack the wagon. The leaders of the militia, wanting to give the impression of tribal hostilities, persuaded southern Paiutes to join with a larger party of militiamen disguised as Native Americans in an attack. During the militia's first assault on the wagon train, the emigrants fought back, and five-day siege ensued. Eventually, fear spread among the military, uh, the militia's leaders that some immigrants had caught si sight of the white men, likely discerning the actual identity of the majority of the attackers. As a result, militia commander eight, William H. Dame ordered his forces to kill the immigrants. By this time, the immigrants were running low on water and provisions. They allowed some members of the militia who approached with the white flag to enter their camp. The militia members assured the immigrants they were protected, and after handing over their weapons, the immigrants were escorted away from their defensive positions while walking a distance from the camp. The militiamen, with the help of auxiliary forces hid, hiding nearby, attacked the immigrants. The perpetrators killed all the adults with older children in the group and in the end sparing only 17 young children under the age of seven. That's probably, probably didn't end great for them. I have a feeling I know what they were used for. Anyway, uh, 
Following the massacre, the perpetrators buried some of the remains, but ultimately left most of the bodies exposed to wild animals and the climate. Local families took in the surviving children, with many of the victims' possessions and remaining livestock being auctioned off. Investigations, which were interrupted by the American Civil War, resulted in nine indictments in 1874. Of the men who were indicted, only John D. Lee was tried in a court of law. After two trials in the Utah Territory, Lee was convicted on a by a jury, sentenced to death, and executed by a firing squad. Doubtful. So, anyway, guys, do you see one of the biggest religions in the world, right? <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that they pull on us, right? Now, this was in 1877? 1857. How many years ago was that? <laughs> How many years ago was 1857? 166 years. Okay, guys? So, it's been 166 years, and... These guys are still, uh, like, in charge. They have secretly been conspiring all behind our backs to put people in charge and to blackmail people and to do false flags like this, flags of falsity, to try and get all of us to be terrified all the time so that they can continue to do brutal stuff like try and wipe out the Muslim religion. That is their mission, that is their job, that is what they plan to do. And do you see, along the way, they use dis nothing but deception, thieving, conniving? Dude, they literally came up with a white flag, made them give over their weapons, and then they killed them all in cold blood, probably shot them in the back. Look, this is me, I look like Joseph Smith. I have no soul. I'm going to eat your soul. I am Joseph Smith. Give me all your wives and your daughters. Give me your daughters. Please. No, he would never say please. Give me your daughters. Give me your daughters now. I'm Joseph Smith and bring them young. <laughs> bring them young? His name is bring them young? Holy shit, dude. It's such a joke. Everything is a psyop. Bring them young. You have to stop, bro. Oh my god. What are they gonna name yourself Paul Weisopel next? Are you gonna name yourself Paul Psyopel next? <laughs> okay. Well, whatever. Bring the end. I'm ready for it, guys. <laughs> we got this. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. How did this get in here? This was the wrong slide. This shouldn't be in here. But, you know, while we're here, guys, if you have a couple minutes and you want to help me with a little investigation, there's a website I need you to go to, www.paulwysopel.com, okay? And if you go there, you know, we've got a lot of different things here. We've got some comparison photos. You know, we've got photos of uh, Paul slash Timothy smiling. His smile is infectious, if you take a look. He's a pretty happy guy. He's a chipper man. And <laughs> this reminds me, does Eddie Liger look like Timothy McVeigh? I'm going to need a couple of opinions. You guys tell me. What do you think? You be the judge. You tell me, Eddie. Tell us all, Eddie. Eddie? What is this about, Eddie? 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 Is Timothy McVeigh your dad? <laughs> brother it, that would be so insanely funny and such a good catch if it was true oh my god it would be so funny dude that would i would believe it instantly though eddie liger tiger there's no way liger is your last name for real <laughs> oh no oh no well you got us good job you made us think that you were a decent person and you aren't, so joke's on us, I guess. Ha ha ha. Okay, boys, then I accidentally clicks on this one, right? And this, to me, seems kind of like a G-side program, if you catch my drift. It feels kind of like one, too. It's called the Indian Placement Program. Ugh. The Indian... I feel like these are the type of people to, like, very, very liberally use the word savage or something, you know? But anyway... <laughs> The Indian Placement Program, or Indian Place Student Placement Program, they were like, wait, 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 hold on, I got it. I, I will save the program, guys. The Indian Student Placement Program. The, the Indian Student G-Side Program. 
and also called the Lamanite Placement Program, was operated by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in the United States, operating officially operating from 1954 and vir- virtually closed by 1996. That's a weird way to put it. Virtually or not really, you know? Because you know what started popping off in 1996, I feel like? Them troubled teen camps. You know those places? Because I heard a rumor that they were actually at the Indian reservations. At the the, at the Indian conversion reservations. The, the literal same locations. That's what I heard. That's just what I heard, though. Anyway, Native American students who were baptized members of the LDS church were placed in foster homes of LDS members during the school year. They attended majority white public schools rather than the Indian boarding schools or local schools on the reservations. The program was developed according to LDS theology, whereby conversion and assimilation to Mormonism could help Native Americans who had been classified as Lamanites. In terms of theology in the Book of Mormon, an estimated 50,000 Native American children went through this program. That is not an insignificant number, guys. That is not whatsoever an insignificant number. That is a lot. And this was going on through 1996. The foster placement was intended to help develop leadership among Native Americans and assimilate them into majority American culture. You know, the the Mormons country, the country of America that is meant to be white the cost of care was borne by the foster parents <laughs> and financially oh no the foster parents okay yeah but you know they were like let's make movies with them let's let's give them away to people let's use them ourselves let's just <laughs> them we don't care they're not actually humans they're not humans like us because they're laminites dude this shit is so cringe And this, to me, is what we call a G-slide, right? This is erasing Native American culture. This is literally killing them, too. Dude, how many... We have not even looked, but the bodies that are going to be found on those reservations are going to baffle people. Remember those 700 bodies that hap- that were found behind that prison? Whatever happened with all that? Nothing? <laughs> Is anyone talking about that? What the frick? What did happen with that? The police did that? Or prison guards? What? <laughs> that's crazy. Dude, that's weird. Anyway, during the earliest days of the LDS church in Utah, Mormon- Mormons often raised Native American children in their homes. Leader, bring them young advocated buying children held by Native American and Mexican traders as slaves, a legal practice in the Utah Territory prior to the American Civil War, freeing them from slavery, then encouraged Latter-day Saints to educate and acculturate the children as if they were their own, i.e. not Native Americans. (laughs) But this is the best part about LDS, too, is that they are simpleton, uh, primate, like, primitive dummies, but also they're kind of like cute little pets. They're like cute little toys. Look, it says LDS theology suggests that Native Americans have a special status. It held that Native Americans had two distinct phenotypes, Nephites, light-skinned, righteous, and civilized people, and Lamanites, idle, savage, and bloodthirsty, for which they were cursed by God with dark skin. I'm not kidding. Cursed by God with dark skin. In the Book of Mormon narrative, the Lamanites ultimately became the more righteous of the two groups as the Nephites fell into apostasy and were themselves destroyed. The Book of Mormon insists that the Lamanites would survive the destruction of the Nephites and would, in turn, be brought into salvation and be restored again to the knowledge of the truth and be white. So, it makes you think about all the, like, thing. Remember when Michael Jackson turned white? And wait, these people run all these rings and stuff? They're like, the Zios, the Zios believe this stuff. Like, it's an occult religion that they believe here. It's literal witchcraft. Like, literal, like, black magic bad kind of witchcraft. Like, the kind that's, like, energy vampire style, you know? Not, like, cool witchcraft. Like, collaborative protection witchcraft. This is dark, evil, bad witchcraft. Because that's what Joseph Smith's family comes from. They're literal 
practicing occult magicians, you guys. Wish I was kidding, but you want to know who all these Lucifer believers are? It's the Mormons. At the top of their religion, I believe that they find out that they worship Lucifer. That's what I think, anyway. In my opinion, but I wouldn't know. But I am a time traveler. And I have telepathy. Dude, I wanted so much when I was younger to be able to be like Matilda and just freaking pick shit up with my head, with my brain. I literally sat and tried to do it for like hours, days, for sure. Dude, Matilda was so good. What was her, what was her teacher's name? Miss Fl Flower or something? No, I forget her name. But I, dude, I think she was my first crush. That teacher from Matilda. Ugh, what a magical time that was. I didn't have to think about any of this shit then. But anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Genocide. <laughs> so where is it? Oh, here we go. The ISPP worked to instill Western Western notions of industry through the imposition of an ethno-religious identity. The Lamanite identity defined Indians as culturally and spiritually apostate Israelites destined for latter-day restoration through an internalized Protestant work ethic. That is, work will set you free. Do you hear me? Have you ever heard of that before? Work will set you free. Yikes. A yikaroo. I would not associate with a phrase like this ever. But hey, I'm not a Nat Zio, you know? I am not. I am not a Nat Zio like all the Mormons are. Hey, I'm sorry. It's what you, literally your religion teaches. They have to take this land and they have to make it white. It's just what Joseph Smith read out of his golden tablets like this like a bird he put his head in the ground like a bird he put his head in the ground like a big dumb bird and he read he did an improv a big dumb big bird he's big he's a big dumb dummy big bird he's big ass bring them young big bird that's what he is okay so <laughs> i don't know what to tell you guys i know you didn't choose to start your life in your religion but you can leave that's a choice people cannot change their skin color except or I feel like you guys had something to do with Michael Jackson not being black, you know, and trying to, like, it just feels like some weird Mossad, Nancy, Mormon, MK Ultra mind trickery, you know, because that, that is, guys, that is what, like, Cat Williams talks about, you know, when he's talking about the men and the black men in dresses thing, it's a social thing. It's, it's to, as a culture, effeminize black people and to put them in ridic you know like they think of it as ridiculing them and like it's like the zionists think of them as like their little gestures their little entertainment monkeys you know so i don't know it feels weird i don't think that they should be in charge of anything all these nat zeos they literally run all the s trafficking things like dudes ozark is based on did you know that ozark the show is based on a mormon family <laughs> They run so many criminal enterprises. It's crazy, dude. They literally think that their their religion is money. They're obsessed with money. Their religion is literally money, the Mormons. And dude, it's literally every single thing that is accused of Jewish people is Mormons. Truly. Yeah. They they worship a false idol gold they do don't do it and i won't say it so i'm not taking that back <laughs> it's true i'm telling you it's a it's about abuse if it wasn't about abuse and control drink a cup of coffee right now if it wasn't about abuse and control drink a fucking cup of coffee right now you know so miss me with that you can choose not to be a mormon especially you should when you find out that they're they literally let, they saved the Nat Zeos. You guys are sick. Like, you gave safe harbor to all the Nat Zeos. You did your rocket companies with them. Like, it's madness. You guys will overlook anything. For what? Because you think skin color has to do with people's, with the way people behave and like the way people's worthiness. You guys are white and you are pretty worthless, you know? You're pretty disgusting. How, how does that how do you factor that in? Y'all kill people, like, <laughs> without... Dude, it's crazy, the stuff that they're doing. All these Nat Zeos, 
just they a life means nothing to them all of our artists they've been taken you know these people are sick and the whole thing is about control and we keep letting them get away with this stuff all of the churches all the catholic church bro all that shit should have been shut doors shuttered the second that everyone saw that movie spotlight <laughs> like what are we doing here look, look at jesse setobor's affidavit every single place is run out of a church a catholic church usually but all of them they're all equally into s trafficking children they think that they have a holy right from god to s traffic and abuse children so the only people that would do it intervention is an intrusion on the right to be fully native american a weakening of cultural pluralism and a cause of psychological damage most of the students came from the navajo nation so that's what this is about guys it's about abuse and trauma it is mk ultra they said we can change their brains we can we if they say they're gay we can make them not gay we can convert them we can convert the Indians into good, obedient, little, simpleton, white folk. They won't look like it, but hopefully they'll act like it. Am I right? Like, that's what they want. <laughs> They're sick, guys. But here we go. We get to the obligatory, of course, what the real reason is. The SA litigation. And, dudes, all these schools and all this shit is about control, power, and abuse. It's fucked. It's fucked. I hate them. They're bad people. I'm sorry. Let's watch a um, secret ritual. Yeah, it's never before seen footage. Oh my god, a planet called Kolob. Normal. Normal. Look at this. Normal. Gold. Gold bowls. They believe they can convert and save the souls of dead and baptizing by... Baptizing them in abs absentia, even without the, or often without the knowledge and permission of the deceased person's family. They're just using this lady as a proxy to to baptize random people. Because they think that if they baptize them, even after they're dead, that they get to keep their souls. Because they're collecting souls, dude. As you are asked to proceed to the veil, please do so in an orderly manner, row by row, as directed. We will now proceed with the presentation of the endowment. Brethren and sisters, if you are true and faithful, the day will come when you will be chosen, called up and anointed kings and queens, priests and priestesses, whereas you are now anointed only to become such. Bro, this is so weird. It depends upon your faithfulness. Brethren and sisters, as you sit here, you will hear the voices of three persons who represent Elohim, Bro, uh... and Michael. Elohim will command Jehovah and Michael to go down and organize a world. The work of the six creative periods will be represented. They will also organize man in their own likeness and image. Dude, it's all just Hollywood Michael. theater. See, Dude, Hollywood it's Michael just, organized. they're all theater Go kids. Down, into a world like into the other worlds that we have here to for. Come, Michael. Let us go down. We will go down, Jehovah. Michael, see, here is matter unorganized. We will organize it into a world like unto the other worlds that we have here to formed. We are instructed to give unto you the law of consecration as contained in the Book of Doctrine and Covenants. In connection with the law of the gospel, uh, and the law dude. of the gospel that you have already received. What the frick? They got Open secret systems. walls? This is the veil of the temple. As all of you will have to pass through the veil, we will show you how this is to be done. The person is brought to this point, and the worker gives three distinct taps with the mount. Whereupon the Lord parts the veil and asks, What is wanted? Dude, it's all just theater. It's all just secrecy. It's all just secrecy because it's a cult. They have to... Make you think that you it's a new level that you unlocked. 
And I'm telling you, at the end of it, they're going to say, after you've done all of this insanity without questioning it, they're going to say, also, the God that we worship is actually Lucifer. And you actually have to go out and make these people suffer because we are like energy vampires and we leech off of bad energy. That's what they're going to say. And you, the 14th level Mormon or whatever who's spent the first 30 years of their life giving everything to this nonsense, what are you going to do? You're going to say, well, if it's sunk cost, if I don't, if I fucking quit now, everything up until then has been worthless. So you stay in and you let these Nazios <laughs> not annihilate all of us. And then you take all of our shit, just like they're doing in Palestine. There, It's a bunch of I-worders, Israelis knocking on uh, Palestinians' doors and saying, this is my house now. Because I don't think you are a human. Because my religion says you aren't. But really, it's all bullshit because they're just all being racist. Ugh. Having been true and faithful in all things, desires further light and knowledge by conversing with the Lord through the veil. Present him at the veil, and his request shall be granted. The person is then brought to this point, whereupon the Lord puts forth his right hand, gives the first token of the ironic priesthood, and asks- Glory hole? Dude, they have a freaking glory hole in there? What is that? The first token of the ironic priesthood. Has it a name? It has. Will you give it- Yep, Freemasons. The person then gives through the veil the name of this token, which is the new name received in the temple today. The person is again brought to this point, and the worker gives three distinct taps with the mallet. The Lord parts the veil and asks, What is wanted? Adam, having conversed with the Lord through the veil, desires now to enter- Dude, it's theater. It's all a play. <laughs> this is so cringe. ...to his presence. The Lord puts forth his right hand, takes the person by the right hand, and says, Let him enter. He is admitted into the presence of the Lord. First token of the ironic priesthood. It has. I will through the veil. Eli. What is that? The second token of the ironic priesthood. It has. I will through the veil. Heinrich. What is that? The first token of the Melchizedek priesthood. Or sign of the nail. It has. I will through the veil. The sun. What is that? The second token of the Melchizedek priesthood. The patriarchal grip or sure sign of the nail. It has. I cannot. I'm not yet he fled. For Mitt Romney's great grandpa to fled to Mexico he because he. <laughs> yeah, there's no way they gave up this polygamy shit. No way, dude. That's the whole point of it. It's about abuse and power. Oh my god. And then you get you get into a secret airport lounge rooms. You get to go. <laughs> You're admitted into the final kingdom of heaven and they bring you to a fucking United Airway airport lounge? <laughs> Dude, these people are too funny. You guys try too hard. You do too much, okay? Mystery and stuff is fun. Intrigue, but like, this is cringe. So what? And then they... <laughs> Dude, it's literally a speakeasy. So what? After you're you you're allowed in this building, you just get to like you know the secret entrance into this lounge and what? What do you guys do? Just talk? You spill the tea? You do the goss? It's all so cringe, dude. All right, let's finish up with that Mormon animation. We gotta watch that animation, bro. Dude, and like Battlestar Galactica and stuff is all made by Mormons. They intentionally freaking like mixed in their religion and stuff with this great sci-fi so that they could try and trick us because again, their whole thing is deception. All they do is deception. That's what they did to kill the Mount Meadows Regardless massacre people, right? Deception. Veneer, the basic tenets of Mormonism are in direct conflict with biblical Christianity. The following piece of animation based directly on actual Mormon publications, highlights these major doctrinal differences. Mormonism teaches that trillions of planets scattered throughout the cosmos are ruled by countless gods who once were human like us. They say that long ago on one of these planets, to an unidentified god and one of his goddess wives, a spirit child named Elohim was conceived. This spirit child was later born to human parents who gave him a physical body. Through obedience to Mormon teaching and death and resurrection, he proved himself worthy and was elevated to godhood as his father before him. Mormons believe that Elohim is their heavenly father and that he lives with his many goddess wives on a planet near a mysterious star called Korah. 
Here, the god of Mormonism and his wives through endless celestial se- I mean, bro, like, the sci-fi is fun. Yeah, let's write Battlestar Galactica. Let's have fun. But w when it turns into a secret S trafficking cult, come on, guys. Like, that's a little too far, okay? That's too far. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> produced billions of spirit children. To decide their destiny, the head of the Mormon gods called a great heavenly council meeting. Both of Elohim's eldest sons were there, Lucifer and his brother Jesus. A plan was presented to build planet Earth, where the spirit children would be sent to take on mortal bodies. What did I say? Who are you gonna find out at the end of this? What is the M. Night Shyamalan ending of this, you know, the 13th step or whatever of the Mormon church? What is the secret at the end that you're praying to Lucifer? I know it. I know it at my core, dude. <laughs> Joseph Smith's mom was like an occult magician. And, and his uncle was a cult leader, literally. Good from evil. Lucifer stood and made his bid for becoming savior of this new world. Warning the glory for himself, he planned to force everyone to become gods. Opposing the idea, the Mormon Jesus suggested giving man his freedom of choice, as on other planets. The vote that followed approved the proposal of the Mormon Jesus, who would become savior of the planet Earth. Enraged, Lucifer cunningly convinced one-third of the spirits destined for Earth to fight with him in revolt. Thus, Lucifer became the devil and his followers the demons. Sent to this world, they would forever be denied bodies of flesh and bone. Those who remained neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin. This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. The spirits that fought most valiantly against Lucifer would be born into Mormon families on planet Earth. These would be the lighter-skinned people, or white and delightsome, as the Book of Mormon describes them. Lightsome. Early Mormon prophets taught that Elohim <laughs> and one of his goddess wives came to- Did they literally say white and delightsome? Come on, you guys. Stop. As Adam and Eve to start the human race. Thousands of years later, Elohim in human form once again journeyed to Earth from the starbase Kolob, this time to have sex with the Virgin Mary in order to provide Jesus with a physical body. After Jesus Christ grew to manhood, he took at least three wives, Mary, Martha, and Mary Magdalene. <laughs> Through these wives, the Mormon Jesus, for whom Joseph Smith claimed direct descent, supposedly fathered a number of children before he was crucified. According to the Book of Mormon, after his resurrection, Jesus came to the Americas to preach to the Indians, who the Mormons believe are really Israelites. Thus, the Jesus of Mormonism established his church in the Americas as he had in Palestine. Guys, I'm telling you, this is all so connected. It's so, so, so connected. I think the driving force of what's going on in Palestine is these people. It's these animated <laughs> Mormons. By the year 421 AD, the dark-skinned Indian Israelites, known as Lamanites, had destroyed all of the white Nephites in a number of great battles. The Nephites' records were supposedly written on golden plates and buried by Moroni, the last living Nephite in the hill Camorra. Spectrum Business is made oh, to work, these fucking like ads, small business. bro. This is what it's all about. This is what the LDS Church is later, all about. A young ads. treasure seeker named Joseph Smith, who was known for his tall tales, claimed to have uncovered the. Dude, literally, he was just a treasure digger. He was. <laughs> by treasure seeker, they mean grave robber. He literally robbed graves and stole their jewels from them because he was a broke ass hoe again because his family were a bunch of weird occult like magicians dude fuck magicians he's saying gold. yeah so he 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 was a grave robber he was a grave robber and then he found out that he could he was kind of like charismatic and he was a con man like he used his power for bad and for personal gain which is what the mormon religion is about it's about being bad and allowing yourself to do bad things for God. Plates near his home in upstate New York. He is now honored by Mormons as a prophet because he claimed to have had visions from the spirit world in which he was commanded to organize the Mormon church because all Christian creeds were an abomination. Wasn't that fucking convenient, bro? Wasn't that fucking convenient that God reached out to Joseph Smith and told him to lead this church? And at the same time, he Joseph Smith was like, oh, I'm broke as a joke. What do I do? And God stepped in and said, you are meant to lead this religion where you make it okay to uh, marry 13-year-old brides and uh, 
and and have multiple wives because you are weak-willed. That is what this religion is about. I do kind of fuck with this animation, though. I kind of like it. <laughs> Joseph Smith, who originated most of these peculiar doctrines, which millions today believe to be true. Which millions today have been MK Ultra'd into believing is true. <laughs> By maintaining a rigid code of financial and moral requirements and through performing sacred temple rituals for themselves and the dead, the Latter-day Saints hope to prove their worthiness and thus become gods. Do you see? They think they are gods. They think they're gods now. Religion is not great, guys. I mean, religion's fine, but this organized shit, like, do it at your house. If you have to go anywhere for your religion, I don't know. I don't trust it. <laughs> if it's not something that you're inherently doing alone, like, I feel like, <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's like, when I look at these religions, when I look at the Catholic Church, all I see is that they expect 10% of your money and then they abuse your children. That's what I see. That's all I see. You know, you can have community without getting your children abused and without giving 10% of your earnings to a place that actively runs S trafficking rings. Like, it's the churches, guys. It's the churches and the police. That's who does this stuff. That everyone must stand at the final judgment before Joseph Smith, the Mormon Jesus, and Elohim. Those Mormons who are sealed in the eternal marriage ceremony expect to become polygamous gods in the celestial kingdom, rule over other planets, and spawn new families throughout eternity. The Mormons thank God for Joseph Smith, who claimed that he had done more for us than any other man, thank including God. Jesus Christ. The Mormons believe He's that he died as a martyr, shed his blood for us, yep. so that we too may become gods. He's way better than Jesus, dude. That's what the Mormons said. Although there are thousands of Mormon churches throughout the world, there are only a few dozen Mormon temples. These massive structures play a vital role in the Mormons' quest for godhood. Mormons must engage in a series of occultic rituals inside the temple in order to become a candidate for godhood. Only an elite selection of devout Mormons are allowed to enter. To do so, the potential Mormon god must adhere to a strict code of ethics, including abstinence from tobacco or caffeine-based products, paying a full tithe to the Mormon church, and wearing of the magic Mormon underwear 24 hours a day. But also, you can kill people because God is telling us to. You can kill Kurt Cobain. You can kill Anthony Bourdain. You can kill anyone because we are Nat Zeos, and whatever it takes to get America to be white, the way that Joseph Smith and Bring Them Young wanted it the way that these white suprema pizzas wanted it we gotta make it that way okay and you can do anything to get there see they rob steal kill doesn't matter you can run a, a cartel's money laundering business you can literally run p-file filming rings you can literally run s trafficking rings you can do drug trafficking you can do anything because god told white man that they can hey i'm just saying what elohim or whatever said he has to receive satisfactory interview from his bishop and from his state president there he's asked or she has asked certain rather penetrating questions about their worthiness their morality if he's a full tithe peer that is the only way that we can be with our heavenly father otherwise uh, we could not be in his presence if this dude was still alive check his hard drive you have to check his hard drive right now do it check his hard drive and prove that it's not got weird stuff because i know i can tell by his eyebrows bro the motivation for the Mormon male to commit to such requirements is the promise of endless celestial sex with thousands of goddess wives, oh along my with God, a personal they're so lame, dude. planet to rule and reign over. However, Mormon males who fail to meet all of the necessary requirements risk being castrated upon their entrance to heaven. So you can see why the temple is so important to the Latter-day Saint. Because if he is worthy to go into the temple and there receive the sacred ordinances and covenants and keep them, he can eventually grow into becoming a god himself. Tell me who God the Father is to you. He is like you and I, every human being on the face of the earth. Oh, is he a man? Yes, he is. How did he get to be God? God said. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's, a, he's perfect in every way. So if we are perfect, can we become like God? Yes, ma'am. Look, dude, they have this, this dude has the same exact look. He, bro, he's got the same exact eyes and look. Look at that. He's got the same freaking look as this guy. This guy right here. This is dad. <laughs> He's got that same long, like, MK Ultra stare. He's like, what was my pre-programmed response? What am I supposed to say here? Uh, what did my priest who abused me tell me that I needed to say in this moment? I forget. Anyway. And you know this ass clown liar, Johnny Harris. You know he's gonna have some dumb shit to say. 
Let's see. Let's watch a couple minutes, see if we can catch it. Johnny Harris pretends to be an ex-Mormon. He has a video that said, why I left the Mormon church or something. But Johnny Harris works for the CIA, which <laughs> means that he is Mormon. He went to BYU. He acts like a Mormon. He lies for the CIA daily. Uh, and then watch this promotional video he made for the Mormon church. <laughs> it's Joseph. called The True Story of Joseph Smith. White daddy. Best, best whitest guy. Totally, yeah. Also, America is supposed to be white. That's what I, Johnny Harris, believe. You know what I mean? That's what me, Johnny Harris, believes. Smith. He's someone I know well. He's the author of a worldview that I held for most of my life. Held. I taught it to hundreds of people when I was a missionary. It's a religion and a gospel that I deeply believed in. One Still full do. of hope and meaning Seems and like. community. And unique stories. Stories about where we came from and where we're going. Let Dude, me show you. Look at this beautiful leftovers, the HBO show title sequence style fucking animation Johnny Harris is doing. This is a promotional video for Mormonism. <laughs> do you do you not have any of the answers to life? Is your life fucking misery like everyone else's? Well, give us your daughters. Bring them young. <laughs> what Joseph Smith built and how he did it. How a non-religious, uneducated kid in upstate New York created a global movement that would gather huge numbers of followers in a very short time and who were pushed out from town to town, often with violence. I want to show you how these people held on to the vision and mission that Joseph Smith taught. The building. Dude, this is so beautiful. I hate Johnny Harris so much because of this. He's such a good editor. He's a great storyteller. And then he uses his, his, <laughs> his power for evil. He uses his power for evil lies and covering for the cia which is a criminal enterprise along with his religion dude ugh, pisses me off how good of an editor johnny is fuck you johnny you disappointed me so much by being a national zionist i hate it it's so gross that you want a white america i, I think it's fucked up of a new utopian society one founded and when you say that you don't believe uh, uh that you work for the cia which does believe that so eat my b-hole dirty on celestial laws one that was preparing for the end of the world Zion. and the second coming of jesus christ so let me tell you the story of joseph smith the church he built and how that church and its mission still exist today. And let me try and convert you, because I am a Mormon missionary after all. Hey, before we open up this large can of worms, Squarespace. No, no, no. Years, no. I want Better to thank help. The sponsor of Better today's help. Video, the people who make this all possible. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring today's video. <laughs> BetterHelp is kind of relevant to today's video because BetterHelp is a platform for therapy. A few years ago, I started seeing a therapist oh every week. Not because I had we some clinical lose. mental health we issue that I was trying to address, lose. but rather because I wasn't feeling Bro, good. we literally cannot lose. Going to and has also, yeah, I am a ethical streamer here, so I'm an ethical watcher. We're going to watch Johnny Harris's CIA ad. This is a literal CIA company, in my opinion. BetterHelp? Oh, for sure. Better help? Oh, dude, it is so CIA. If you need a therapist, though, get your own personalized fed. Better help. Yeah. Better help. Better help. Oh, my God, Johnny. How long is this ad? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. A discount. See if it fits for you. So I'm grateful to Better Help for existing, but also for uh, sponsoring today's video. With that, let's dive back into this. Let's talk about it's the, the CIA, bro. Joseph Smith was born in the perfect place at the perfect time. It was the early 1800s, and the U.S. had just thrown off England. He was the perfect place at the perfect time, and he was a perfect man with nothing wrong with him. This is 40 minutes. Okay, we're going to watch two minutes of this. That's it. But, bro, tell me this isn't a fucking ad. England to become a new country. It was going through some massive growing pains. Most of these new Americans who had just left the old world rejected a lot of old world things, namely religion. Only 10% of white Americans regularly uh, You know what's funny, too? You know what is also very interesting to me is that Johnny is... I've never seen this in a Johnny Harris video. He's sitting in like a literal interview setup. Like he was sat down and interviewed. Johnny Harris usually does this, like at his desk or whatever, more informal. But Johnny Harris pulled out all the shots. Dude, it, this video is so beautiful. It pisses me off. Johnny Harris, you are using your... You're using your powers for demonic purposes, which makes sense because you guys are all Luciferian weirdos, in my opinion. At this time. So to help revive God, you have all these super charismatic preachers who left the cities and went out to the countryside to preach. And this led to an... He means grifters. They were grifters and con men. 
con men. Grifters and con men. They didn't have Google in their pocket to check, fact check things back in the day when Google actually had information and truth on it. <laughs> explosion of religious thought, especially in upstate New York. So now you have all these like hyper reformist religions that were replacing old style authoritarian type churches. All these new wild religious flavors that were more emotional, expressive. Bro, is this fucking AI? Did Johnny get the AI drip like early? Because this is from like a, two years ago, I thought. Dude, I hate how good Johnny's videos are. He's such a fucking propagandist. And personal. I mean, none of us were alive at this time, but you can kind of imagine, like, this brand new country founded on these new ideals. It was unprecedented times. America felt special and different. But you also got too much headroom here, Johnny. New, world, new science, magical technology, new ideas, both wholesome and sinful. This is too much. Is speeding up at an increasing rate. What are you... You either people, you, you gotta you gotta either go down more, bring your eye level to middle, or bring it up a little. That's too much. Anyway. <laughs> it was a sign. A sign that the end of the world was coming and that Jesus, like he prophesied, would come back to usher in this thousand years of glory. 1843. For those who believed in him and a thousand years of... Oh, and you guys know what the Luciferian Brotherhood calls itself? The thousand year Reich. Fire for those who didn't. This was called the millennium. So a lot of these new churches that were cropping up kind of claimed to be the place that was preparing the earth for the second coming. Like they were God's chosen... AI. Look, dude, Johnny is a demon. He uses AI. Look at him. This is an AI demon right here. Johnny, AI demon confirmed. Who's an administrators on the earth in the final days before it all ended. Oh, it looks it so scary. good though. But I wish that he was like, at the end gonna be like, and they were all crazy. They're all literal conspiracy. Th they're all literally cons. But no, instead he says nothing. It was exciting and God was talking to people again in new ways. Okay, I'm gonna skip to the end because... I have a feeling Johnny's gonna do nothing but disappoint us here. Dude, is this like multiple episodes long? This is 26 chapter. Wait, hold on. Okay, let's see what let's see what the last let's see what his sum up is. If it's gorgeous. Oh my god. Want, These ads, the Johnny. Come because on, bro. I have to watch two full remarkable. ads. Always dry scoop before. Always dry what scoop. What the fuck? I'm getting double run. added? Listen to me. Hot dog diet. Do you need a website for your business and you need it now? How many fucking ads? Sites GPT is the world's first inst oh flash. God, Within 30 seconds, your oh, website skip. will be generated. Brother, I am Cap Capman. <laughs> Joseph Smith was a charismatic leader who knew how to tell stories about magic, about visions, and about treasure. He had known how to do that since he was a teenager, well before he decided he was going to become a prophet. He found an audience in doing this. He attracted people to him with his visionary skills, and he used those skills to invent a complex set of stories about Native Americans actually being Israelites, about heavenly parents preparing the world for its end, and about the priesthood, this authority that we- He tells beautiful, fanciful stories about borders and- <laughs> different countries and weird ways to like squat on people's land and steal it you know all the different ways that we could figure out how to squat on other people's lands and and steal it all the best ways that we could do border disputes that was johnny's specialty remember we all must participate in to receive the rituals and ordinances that only one church can administer and eventually he used these stories to build a movement around his vision that allowed him to take 40 wives and build an army and break laws and bully his enemies. When you are a Latter-day Saint, these facts are written off as anti-Mormon literature or persecution. But for me, having left the church and spent years rewiring my brain and my programming of these stories. Johnny, rewiring your brain? How? You work for the CIA. Tell, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. You literally do cover for the CIA. You literally say that JFK was an assassin. You say that he was killed by Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you say... <laughs> Dude, you giving up Mormonism and replacing it with the CIA? Equally bad. <laughs> I see them as facts. And... Frankly, they're not that surprising. This is the same old story of a charismatic visionary man who tells a story of apocalyptic endings to gain followers, to gain power, and then decides that he deserves a lot of women, and then he dies for the cause, leaving a movement that continues his vision. Oftentimes those movements get more and more dogmatic. They use shame to keep their people close to them, and they revere their prophet long after that prophet is dead. And yet, what's complicated about this is I can't help but feel a deep sense of sadness for having lost my belief in Joseph's story. I can't explain it. But these stories are incredibly comforting when you believe in them. They're motivating. These creative stories, unlike any other belief system, 
can be really beautiful. Bro, it's like all of the belief systems. What do you mean? He just stole it all. It's all stolen. It's an amalgamation. <laughs> that is a The lies people will tell themselves to not think and to just accept what they've been told is reality is crazy to me. Dude, I will never, ever take what people say to me at face value. I will always be like, why are they telling me this? Is it for something bad? Johnny... You gotta rethink your what you're doing, brother. You are a propagandist for the State Department of a national Zionist country. I wouldn't do that. I sure as fuck wouldn't do that, but I don't know how much they're paying you. Johnny, how much are they paying you? How much is better help CIA helping you? How much is better help in Johnny's pockets? <laughs> yeah, how much? Dude, I bet it's not even that much. I bet it's like 200k. You know, it's like a little bit like whoa cool but like not enough to sell your soul and run offense for the fucking cia <laughs> nothing is worth that nothing that there's really no resolution for there's a lot more to say on this but i'm going to save it for part two on the series where we see what happens oh next. my god After joseph is murdered and the latter-day saints move west to find their vision of zion Joseph getting murdered is like the worst thing that could have happened because it just martyred him. Honestly, he should have just died penniless like he lived and like, but dude, these Z's are literally, they're national Zionists. They're, they're not good dudes, man. Johnny Harris is a propagandist for the Mormons. I'm saying it loud and proud. I can't help it. I think it's true. It is true. And if he doesn't work directly for the Mormons, he works for the CIA, which is the same thing. They're all national Zionists. They all want white America people, and we need to wake the fuck up, because I do not think white America will be chill. It'll be weird. It'll smell weird. It'll be so unfun. It'll be literally Handmaid's Tale. I, I don't want to do it, guys. We have to stop these rat fucks, and we have to get out of here, but okay, bye. Oh, so diga, e